Greetings class! In today's history lesson, we will examine the history of racial division in Guyana. The first thing you should know is that these two started it. Pay attention and you will find out how two words divided Guyana's two main ethnic groups. Those two words are Apan Jat. It means black man for black man, kuli for kuli. The published version of this story is different from the one my grandfather told me. He said that Burnham and Jagan returned from an overseas trip and Jagan uttered those words to a Jagannite while greeting him at the airport. Little did Jagan know, Burnham understood Hindi. And from that day onwards, the relationship between Burnham and Jagan went sour and the Burnhamites and Jagannites parted ways forever. The Burnhamites meaning Burnham and his black man supporters and the Jagannites meaning Jagan and his Kuliman supporters. In order for you to fully understand Apanjat, I need to take you all the way back to the 1950s, soon after the end of World War II, when the People's Progressive Party, or the PPP, was founded by Chedi Jagan. Chedi Jagan came from a poor rural background. His social background was of lower middle class East Indian. His father was a driver, an occupation that did not pay very well, but nevertheless, he sent his son Chedi to school in Georgetown and later to the United States to study dentistry at the Northwestern University near Chicago. While at Northwestern, Chedi Jagan met and married Janet Rosenberg and the couple returned to British Guyana after the completion of Chedi's training in dentistry. Lyndon Forbes Burnham came from more of a middle class background. He was the son of a school teacher and lived in the Georgetown area. He was able to go to London and acquire a degree in law. When Burnham joined the PPP, he became the party's chairman. Yes, I know it sounds odd, but Burnham was the chairman of the PPP. Moving on, before elections in 1957, a schism developed within the PPP. Burnham was demanding absolute leadership of the party, which the Jagans were unwilling to grant. Two factions of the PPP emerged as what I earlier described as Burnhamites and Jagannites. You can guess by now what strategy was used to contest in the election. Yes. Apan Jat. When the elections were held, the Jagannites won political control of the parliament, and the Burnhamites took their faction out of the PPP and formed the People's National Congress, or the PNC. During 1961 to 1968, there was social and political turmoil, which further divided the nation by race. And in the 1964 elections, the PNC won 40% of the votes and joined forces with a party called the United Force to govern as a coalition. In the 1968 elections, the Burnhamites claimed the majority of the seats in parliament and was able to govern without the support of the United Force, and so they did. Burnham and the PNC were claiming higher and higher proportions of the votes. In the 1980 elections, the PNC claimed 77% of the votes and 41 seats in parliament, while the PPP got 10 seats and 2 seats went to the United Force. By now, it was clear that the Burnhamites were rigging the elections, since there were way more coolies than blacks. The Apanjat ideology proliferated. Burnham then died while undergoing surgery in Cuba in 1980 and Desmond Hoyt took over. The PNC eventually lost control of the government and the PPP reigned for 23 years until the PNC and friends took over again. And the bucket bend and the story end. Or is it? Do you think Apanjat is still prevalent in our society? Be honest, do you think Granger loves coolie people? Comment below. Mudwato, boom out. Hold up.